before we get into this one, I would love to eat some of my candy. Someone said, no need to argue. You both totally butchered the pronunciation of the Polish title. <laughs> oh, two fruit punch ones. There are yeah. always two fruit punch ones. No, there are always two pink ones. I always get two fruit I punch. always get two pink ones. I don't know why they always put the same color on the packet. Like, hello, I'm here for variety. Can I say hi? Hi, Bean. Hi. This is our Bean, Juno. Ah, I shouldn't have picked such a chewy candy. Oh, it's been so long since we filmed our last video. <laughs> Get it? It's been a couple minutes. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gaming things. Exactly. Is that a piece of garbage they can see? That's my candy wrapper. That's where I keep them. Name that game. It's funny because it says name. Planet Unknown. We are here today with yet another installment of our top 50 games of all time. Time. 40 to 31. 40 one, to 31. One, 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 one. So we are here with our next 10 games. If you have not seen the first 10, 50 to 41, you should probably start there. Because if you start here, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, you do what you want. I'm not your mom. You do you. You do you. What makes you happy? You, you do, do you, it. You do boo-boo. You do it. As I mentioned in our last video, we are going to be doing our top 50 games over the next three weeks. Two videos this week, two next week, and then one on the 23rd will be our last one. Okay. I'm gonna eat candy. Without further ado, we are going to jump into our numbers. What would I say again? 40. 40 to 31. To 31. One. 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 Okay, Jeff, do you want me to go first since you're chomping? My number 40 is a game, believe it or not. We don't know each other's list, too. No. We it's never share surprise. them. We never share them, although we've given hints because we're bad at secrets. Facts. My number 40 was my number 11 last year. Jeez, man. No, it was my number 18 last year. Okay. And that is Azul. Mm. Azul is just a classic, classic game. I beat you. First time ever. And that's what it was. Jeff beat me, and I was like, get this game out of here. Sick of it. Azul is a classic game that I am always going to love. I will always want to play this game. It's a staple. You're building out your grid of tiles and from the factory floor. You're losing points and it's like a tile factory. Mm -hmm. Is that the theme, I think? We did play this game in person this year. However, this is one of my like go-to BGA games. Mm -hmm. We played it in the summertime. This is like our patio game, right? We love to play this game. The chonky bits. Sitting on the patio because nothing's going to blow away with mm -hmm. Azul. Okay, can't blow that game away. Not going to happen. You... <laughs> orange is my favorite too. Oh, no. mm. Mm -hmm. Very orange. Your turn. My number 40 is a game Jamie does not like at all. Agricola. It is Quantum. Quantum is a chess like space game where you have a bunch of dice, and those dice, depending on how many pips you're showing, will represent different types of ships. And those ships have different abilities that they can do, different speeds. What's he doing? I don't know, I just saw it and I want it to touch oh. it. Different speeds, a bunch of different things. And you're trying to go around to a different planets to place out your quantum cubes. Very kind of abstract. Very, very, very difficult to find, but I absolutely love it. I never get to play it because Jamie hates it, Luckily. but it is on BGA. I love quantum. I want to introduce it to more people because I think it is really, really good. My number 39 is a new to us game this year, and it is one of our favorite mechanics. And that is going to be <laughs> pedal to the metal. It's one of your favorite mechanics. Me, I wouldn't say it's one of mine. Me, me, you put me, heat on this? Hell yeah, I put heat on this. This game is so fun. Heat uh, did not make my list. Nerd. It's because you're not very fast, like me. Racing is my favorite game mechanic, and heat is an excellent racing game. I do feel like this is one that will definitely climb up the list as we play it more and more and more because right now it's not beating out the other racing games for me. That might be a spoiler alert, okay? But it's just not. It's not quite there yet. Definitely a spoiler. But it is like Formula One racing, which I know so much about, but it's really cool because... It's like 60s Formula One. Yeah, it's hand management. You are trying to like 
you know, not go too fast around certain areas, but you're still trying to like win. So you have to be really strategic with your cards. You're going to be putting in different like boost cards in your hand and heat cards when you go too fast and all of these things. And there's a little gear shift and it's very, very fun. I love it. Heat is very good. It's not on my list, but it is 61. I respect that. Does that mean there's no racing games on your list? Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, my number 39 is a game that I now have so much content for probably too much content it's one that i think maybe matt and i will play more than me and you will play okay and that is android netrunner yeah 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 you guys go right ahead android netrunner is a really really good two-player card dueling game where one person is playing as a hacker the other person is playing as a corporation trying to set up ice set up blockers for the hacker to not be able to penetrate their defenses and get their secrets and while the corporation is trying to uncover who the hacker is and basically fill them with viruses and, and what have you. Jamie and I played it. I do think you enjoyed it. I did really like it, but it's the terminology of the game that it's, it's a it's game that I feel confusing. like you need to play over and you over and over. This is a you lifestyle have, game. You have to keep on top of it yeah. for sure. It's so thematic. They use words that they probably didn't need to use in terms of explaining that rule set. This Android, is number 13 last year on your list. Yeah, well, and we haven't really played it. I think if I play it more with Matt, it'll go back up. But that's my number 39. Why did I say that so weird? 39. 39. That's my number 39, Android Netrunner. My number 38 actually might, maybe should be higher I love how we do this. I know. It's, it's like, I second guess myself all the time. My number 38 is Three Sisters. And this is from 25th Century. And it is a roll and write. Another one that I really enjoy playing solo. This is kind of like a crunchier roll and write. And I think this type of roll and write is not necessarily your favorite kind of roll and write. I do like Three Sisters. Yes. It's just, it's extremely combo-y. Mm -hmm. And... I love it. I love watching everything kind of like waterfall off of each other. It's fantastic solo and it's beautiful and it's got a cool theme and I really, really like it. I still think like this isn't one that you necessarily want to play a lot. So my issue with them is nothing to do with the game at all. It's to do with my brain. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when I start getting down these combo trains, it's a I'll forget what I've done. Yeah. And what I've missed, and I end up missing so much stuff, and then I end up losing all the time because I can't keep track of all the things I'm supposed Too to be doing. Too much going on. I just, on. my brain's not organized enough to know what to do. I love it. But it's very good. I prefer Three Sisters over Fleet. Me too. I don't know where my brain goes with those games. I don't know where your brain's at either. My number 38 is probably criminally low, and Jamie's probably going to crap on me for it. That is Castles of Burgundy. Check me on last year, because I feel like it was way higher. Yeah. It was 22 last yeah, year. And I'm pretty sure I had the same reaction last year, because that is too low. Okay, again, let's keep in mind, these are our top 50 of all time. Castles of Burgundy Don't is incredible. I love Castles of Burgundy. I pretty much only want to play it at two-player. Castle of, Bur of Burgundy is a really kind of bland-looking <laughs> hexagonal tile placement where you're just trying to develop out different terrain types for your duchy and all of those terrain types scored differently and it's just a race for points basically yes, we did get the deluxe um, new and yes version. we did get the new deluxe version i will play it anytime someone wants to and have such a good time playing it but uh yeah just doesn't crack some of the other games for me my number 37 is another new one to us this year and that is another one actually that was kind of a surprise another one that i read the rule book and i was like i think we're really gonna like this. Didn't realize how much I was gonna like it until we played it, and that was Anachrony. Mm -hmm. Is this high up on your list? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once again, I did not expect to like it at all, but as we were playing it, I was like, I love this game. So basically, like, the world is dying. The planet is dying, or whatever, and you've got your own little place where you want people to live. So you've got your own little area, and you've got your little people, and they can do stuff on your little board, but if you want them to do stuff on the main planet, you got to put them in robot suits. I think it's like the capital or something. The capital. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. So you put them in their little exosuits, little robot, and they go beep, and they go onto the board. And that is cool. I like that. And then there's also like a time mechanic to this, like time travel, where you can like go back in time, or you can jump forward and all these different things. And I loved it. The theme is cool. The gameplay is super fun. It's really crunchy. And it wasn't as complicated as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Gluten! It's a great game. Gluten! <laughs> My number 37 is 
definitely a game that was on my list last year and is a game we did not get to play at all this year. We don't own a copy. If I could find a copy, I would buy it. I did see a copy actually when we were in Edmonton, but it's way too big of a box to bring back. And that is Black, Black Angel. Angel. Which was your number 37 last year. Really? Yeah. I thought it was way higher. No. Look at that. Look wow. at my consistency. That's a crossover with yourself, your past self. Black Angel is a really interesting worker placement game where your workers are dice. Mm -hmm. So dice worker placement. There's two avenues of this game. One part of the game actually happens within the the spaceship, which is called, I'm pretty sure it's called the Black Angel. The Black Angel, yeah. And you're, you're doing things within the ship in order to score victory points and to be able to do things in the other phase of the game, which is the actual outside of the ship. So you can actually send your workers out in little like pods so that are adorable and they can go around outside of the ship and like collect resources and fight monsters and do all these, these things again all with the end condition of scoring victory points. Mm -hmm. And it's a really cool modular board where you're constantly moving towards, what's that stupid planet name? Eunice. Is it like Sven or something? Spass. Spass, that's it, planet Spass. It's planet Spass, S-P-A-S, I, I don't know. <laughs> you're constantly moving forward, so as you go along, the board is actually kind of like being taken off the back and put on the front. And with that, you're losing uh, access to different monster types or alien types and resources and what have you. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, the game ends once you arrive uh, at the planet. It's such a good game. It's from the same designers. Uh, Troy. Twa. Twa. I really, really love Black Angel. And Ginkopolis. He it's, also designed Ginkopolis. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I would really, really love to get a copy. Here's of this the best game. part about Game Cop or Game Cop best part about Black Angel. The little robot guys, you put them in a little spaceship and then you go You do. It's amazing. My at number 36 is another racing game. And this is one of the first, if not the first racing games that we were introduced to, and that is Downforce from Restoration Games. I just love Downforce. Downforce is one of the first racing not games. Not a racing game. Yes it is. It's like a bidding game. Bidding auction game. No, it's a racing game. No, because it's you both it has you don't multiple win. mechanics. You don't win if you get first place. You win you if you get points if your car yeah, but, crosses. But if you cross first, you don't that doesn't mean you win. I don't give a <laughs> God. If somebody if one more person says to me, mm, it doesn't mean I'm just I don't saying. care. Same as I out. don't care. Downforce is a game that we got into when we first got into content creation area of board games. And this game is just so much fun. It is not something that we play in person a ton anymore, although we did get to play a five-person game of it this year when we had a board game weekend. Yeah. I love it. I play it on BGA all the time. If you ever want to play Downforce with me, I am literally always down to play Downforce. I'm in a game of Downforce right now, and I'm getting pumped. You that stakes in your own car, but then you're also like betting on other cars that you think are going to win throughout the game. And here's a secret, people. Take a tip from Jamie. Who's the fastest girl in the world, okay? Always, Jamie always, always bets on bet herself. on yourself. Always. Always. I don't even care if I lose the game. Believe in yourself. Go down believing in yourself. Yeah. Bet on yourself. Yeah. My number 36 is a series of games that we absolutely adore, and I don't know why it's just slow on my list, and it's another one Jamie's going to absolutely freak out. Is this unmatched? Good. It's not unmatched. Is it villainous? It's not. Go ahead. What is it? Dice. <gasps> Jeff! Jeff! Stop it. What number are we on? 36. It's just where it landed. How? Do it again. I won't. We're clumping all of these up. I haven't played Dice Throne Adventures. It's something I really would like to play. Dice Throne is, in my opinion, a incredible 1v1 battle Yahtzee game where there's a ton of characters available now. We fell in love with Dice Throne back in the OG days before there was re-ruled versions. Mm-hmm. And it's just one that's stuck with us. I mean, we've played it on the channel. You can go watch tournaments of this we've done on the channel. We adore Dice Throne. It's just one that I don't... It just hit this spot, and I couldn't justify putting it up any higher. Well, it was higher on your list last year. It was number 27. That's not that far off. It was wrong then, too. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Okay, my number 35 is a classic. This is a game that I, I truly believe 
everyone should play this game, and that is Wingspan. I am almost always in a game of Wingspan on yep. BGA, and we played the base game, I think, physically once this year. We also got into Wingspan Asia, which is a great implementation of Wingspan. This is a classic. This deserves to be on a top 50 list because this game is beautifully designed. It just feels good when you play it. And I don't know how else to explain it. I'm pretty sure you all know what Wingspan is, but if you don't, you should go get it and you should play it. Or you should play it on BGK for free. My number 35 mm -hmm. is the first campaign game to show up on my list. And that is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Okay, let's see what that Which fell. was probably my top five last year. Maybe not. Eight. This is just a product of a one and done situation. I'll never forget my experience with Jaws of the Lion. That's why it's still in my top 50, but it's going to continue to fall out because it's just the nature of those campaign games. Nature of the beast. Uh, I respect Jaws of the Lion for being one of the first campaigns that we finished. I'm sure there's other games that have done this, but it was the first one we experienced that actually had the maps as a storybook mm. that you could open up and just plop down and play. Yes. Jaws of the Lion was an incredible experience for both of us. We hammered through that campaign yeah i sure. love gloomhaven and that series of games and they refined it down to make it more accessible i'm all for that it's just again this time next year it's probably gonna pop off it's the only it's, campaign game we've ever finished start to finish it's true it is true <laughs> my number 34 game was my number five game this year last year it is a game that i absolutely love you get, you're shitting on me for games like yeah Listen. Your games have been dropping way more than mine have. I don't care about that. Five I to that, 34? I care that the games that I care about are high on your oh, list. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. You're going to be pissed off to know that Disney Villainous is not on my list then. That's a lie. I'm dead serious. It was it's, in your top 10 last year. 54. Like, who do you even think you are? I'm Jeff. <laughs> My name is Jeff. My number 34 is Fort from Leader Games, which is a game that I love. I love it. It is one of my go-to games. It is one of my comfort games, but I can't win. And I am getting freaking sick of it. I'm sick of it. I, I build better forts in real life. I'm better. Do I have, you? That's I, not proof. I own That's more not toys. Proven. What? Jeff eats more pizza? I don't care. I have more toys. Okay? That's true. I'm annoyed at this point. But anyways, the point is that I love this game. It is a deck building game where you are playing as kids. You are building out your fort. You're getting toys and pizza and you're stealing each other's friends. And we have the expansion with cats and dogs. It's an excellent game. It's an excellent game. I love it. I will always love this game. But yeah, it's fallen a little bit for me this year. My number 34 is a game that, uh, do we play it this year? Mm -hmm. I think we did. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Rising Sun. Rising Sun is a area control game in the same vein as Ankh and Blood Shinto's Rage. Shinto's May Warship. <laughs> the Shinto's May Warship. I love Rising Sun. It is now apparently out of print, which I didn't know. Stop. Yeah. Does Lance have it? Yeah. Why didn't you buy it? Because it's $108. Blood Rage. I would rather Rising Sun. You go buy it then. You got your own Mario coins. <laughs> Rising Sun is a game we fell in love with, and I think it's one of the few games that Jamie also loves. I that, loved of that that's, series. That's in that genre, and so that props it up a bit more for me because it's one we can enjoy together. I normally don't like or don't love that bidding mechanic, but it has a bidding mechanic for the fighting actions, which I think mm -hmm. is really unique. It's always a great time when it hits the table. Hey, okay, where are we? Number 33. I drooled. My number 33 is the first Alice in Wonderland game on this list. And it is a game that is very challenging and it's called uh, Paint the Roses. Yeah, I knew this was gonna be on your list. Oh God, I love this game. I love this game because, see, this is the difference. Fort, I'm angry, can't win. Paint the Roses, happy, can't, can't win. win. <laughs> Need to keep trying. Yes. But it's because Paint the Roses is a cooperative, it is such a unique game. It is a cooperative deduction game where like you have these different tiles with patterns and you are either trying to get someone to guess two colors, two shapes, or a color and a shape by putting out little clue tokens on tiles when somebody puts them out. The Queen of Hearts is chasing you, trying to chop off your head. She's a rascal, that one, okay? You can never please her. Anyways, the point is, I love this game. We just played this again last Monday. Yeah. And we played it with somebody, it was their first time playing it, and they were like, that's the game of the night that 
they were still thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's the game they want to come back to because it is one of those games where you're like, it's so hard to win. So when you win, it mm -hmm. feels so and the, the modules are so difficult. But in a good way. My number 33 is a game we, last time we played it, we didn't end up playing it in person. We packed it up and uh, shipped it off. <laughs> that is Great Western Trail. Ah, oh, the fail of the trail. The fail of the trail as it's known around here. As it's known around these parts. After that experience, uh, Great Western Trail had kind of fallen off and nothing bad happened. Just we had played it before and all thought, We'll remember this yeah. enough. And we played it a year later and none of us We did. didn't remember it enough. And like, we, we didn't prepare. It. It, it was nothing to do with the teacher. It was just... It was the fail of the trail. The fail of the trail. You can watch it on a board game weekend video. You can. But I've been playing a ton of A Great Western Trail 2nd Edition on BGA. And it reminded me why I love this game so much. There's a bunch of different paths to victory. You're basically going around this... Uh, I'll call it a rondelle, even though it really isn't. You're going from point A to point B. And then you'll rinse, repeat. And you kind of want to race through this and do as many actions as you can. And then at the end of the trail, you're going to pay cow cards in order to score victory points. A bunch of things you can do in this game. I've fallen back in love with it. It's one that I want to play more and more. I would like to play it in person again. Mm -hmm. Now that I've played it a bunch, I feel like we could navigate that a lot easier. I like the fluffy cows. My number 32 is a game that we have yet to play fully correctly. But now we know. Now we know. Now we know how to play it, right? And that is Honey Buzz. And I don't even care that we've played it wrong and that we made it 10 times harder for ourselves, nearly impossible. This game is amazing. It is so cute. It's basically, it's a worker placement game with little bees and the bees have a honey business. They're like, you know what? We can capitalize on this. We should be selling our honey to those idiots. That is what you're doing. It has squishy little honey, little thingies, resources in it. And I love it. It has beeples. It does have I don't know what else to say about it other than that I love it and I'm very, very excited for the Fall Flavors expansion. I forgot about that. <sighs> I can't wait. Why do we need expansions? We don't. We don't. Probably never use it. My number 32 was a game that was on my list last year, probably in a much higher position, and that is Cthulhu Death May Die. Cthulhu Death May Die is a big boss battler scenario based dice chucker. Lovecraftian theme where ultimately you're playing as a bunch of different characters trying to fight off either Cthulhu or Haster in the base game and all of his little minions or their minions. Doing that by increasing your player stats, getting new gear, and you're constantly going a little bit more insane as the game continues and that's actually beneficial you get a little bit more powerful as you get a little bit more insane but you don't want to go too insane because then you lose and then you kind of flip and you might actually end up changing the win condition for yourself mm -hmm. so it might be that you're playing against the group now or it might just say win the game as per normal but no one knows so then you can kind of play off their group and pretend can't like, trusted. you know, you can you can be trusted or you can't be trusted. It's a really cool dynamic. And it's just really fun to get super powerful and just be throwing 10 dice at an enemy. And just everyone's like, oh my God, you just killed like six minions. It's like some of the best gaming experiences I've had is playing that game. I always play as Rasputin. All right, last one for the list for today for me is another racing game. And guess what? You can't argue that this one's not a racing game, you butt. It's called Flam Rouge, and it's about racing Actual on racing game. bikes. This game. Really? 32? I, you, 31. 31. You didn't play it with more people. I got to play it with more people this year. I played it when we went to California with Francis and Jenna, and it is such a fun game. This game, you are racing. You have two bike racers. You have your sprinter and your rouleur. For those who are French, you'll know exactly what that means. You're Roulaire. Pacer, is it? I think so. And I want to see what that actually means. How do you... How do you uh, R-O-U-L-E-R. R-O-U-L-E-R. Roulaire. It says to roll. <clears throat> yeah, he's rolling on that bike. Weird. Just look up French word for pacer. Menil de Trin. <laughs> we'll see, they couldn't. That's too many words. You have two racers and you're going to have two different decks and each round you're going to play out a card that has a speed on it for them to go. You can only play every card once which is a really unique mechanic in this. So if I play my six now for my sprinter then I lose that for the rest of the game. So it's one of those things where you really kind of have to like try and figure out what everybody else is going to do because you don't necessarily want to be in the front 
of the pack because if you're in the front, you're gonna get exhausted. You're gonna get exhaustion cards. But if you're kind of in the middle, that's like the sweet spot the until the end because then you'll get to slipstream and you'll mm. get to go whoop. I'm actually gonna sneak, excuse me, I'm gonna sneak right by you there. Uh, typical Canadian fashion, you say sorry. Oop. I'm just gonna sneak right by it, sorry. Yeah, I really, really love Flam Rouge. It is an excellent game. Excellent, excellent. I do excellent. like Flam Rouge, I'm Ram. just kinda. My number 31 is a second campaign game. It is one that we haven't played this year, but I know that if I play it, and when I play it, which is going to happen this year, it would be even higher on this list I because know what it is. the IP is my favorite IP, and that is Lord Ram. of the Rings. Journeys Jason in Middle Earth. Which was your number 14 last year. It's fallen because we just haven't played it. We are going to play it this year. I really love Lord of the Rings. It's my favorite movie series. It's my favorite world. And I'm so, so excited to explore Journeys in Middle Earth. Definitely looking forward to getting it. We've played like three quarters of one scenario with Jamie's brothers. I will fall in love with this game. It, it's got the recipe for it to be like a top 10 game for me for sure. Top 10. So those are the next 10 games in our top 50 games of all time. That was whatever number, 40 to 31. It was. Come back next week, you'll get to see our 30 to 21 and our 20 to 11, which will be very exciting. I do feel like the top 20 for me are games that are like, those are hard to budge. They're hard to budge. Those are ones that I think are going to keep like, interchanging with themselves yeah. i thought that last year and i had my number two i and think my number i think five. one or two one or two will come in i don't know i you know it's good to say if you are interested in buying board games like any of the many that we mentioned today you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store and for us that is the boardroom game cafe yes it is thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please subscribe we hope to see you again soon and now we say goodbye goodbye later days What are you doing? You don't want to be up anymore, huh? Hey. She wants my Starburst. Hey. But you can't have it. Can come to your dad? Yeah. yeah. She wants to come up to me. Hey ya! <laughs> Nothing. What a, what a dog. Back to the... Back to the bathroom. She sits in the bathroom. <laughs> She's so weird. I don't know why. Like, they're, they're, there's a huge room here. She could lay out. And she wants to sit in the bathroom. Listen, dogs are going to do what dogs are going to hey, do. What? Get out of that. In the garbage. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Wait. What are you doing? Uh, what? Yeah, they're going to get worse and worse, man. You're just going to have to get used to it. You can't pull them all out. John, watch me. You see my shoulders now. <gasps> yeah. What the heck? No. I want to see them. Why do you keep pulling at Planet I X, don't man? Know. And I did forget. You did. <laughs> Stop looking at my list, cheater! And they're this trying This is your to... last one on the list, too, by the way. For this list, it's number 31. No, it's number 32. Can't be. You went before me. Yeah. Number... Th I'm about to do my 31. Oh, my God. I skipped.